Right now at 5.30, we're tracking breaking news out of Paris this morning. Police have been injured. Terror suspects killed as police are conducting raids. The very latest coming up on WKYT. Also, police have more questions than answers in Lexington after a slew of shootings that have left three people injured now. A traffic alert for you in Lexington. A road shut down in the southern portion of town as crews clean up from a semi-truck crash. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you as we await the wind and maybe a storm or two in this day ahead. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Yeah, things could get interesting in the weather department. And then we see <laughs> that it's going to start feeling like November. Oh, yeah, by the weekend, it really yeah. uh, cools down around here. I don't even think Micah will be using the term cool. It'll be cold by the weekend, huh? Yeah, that's probably the best uh, adjective you can use. Is this going to be really cold this weekend? And put it this way, uh, our overnight lows the past few mornings haven't even reached what our highs are going to be this weekend. Yeah, try to wrap that around your, your brain early 532 this morning. There's some rain back toward the west. Here it comes racing our direction. It will get in the western zones here in the next few hours. I'd say 8 to about 11 a.m. So it's a slow mover. So when it rolls over you, uh, expect some heavy rain out of this. Temperatures are there in the 50s and 60s this morning. It's not a bad feel. 68 there by noontime, but once that rain begins, drops those temperatures back down. It's just going to be a soggy day in store and also very windy. I'll show you some wind gusts that are pretty high out there coming up in a few minutes. Then and we have a lot going on this morning. We have breaking news that we're tracking out of France this morning. Paris police involved in an hours long standoff with suspects linked to those deadly terror attacks in the French capital last week. SWAT team stormed an apartment building in the Paris suburb of Saint Denis overnight, where gunfire and explosions could be heard. Jonathan Vigliotti has the details. Gunfire erupted in the Paris suburb of Saint Denis overnight, where police believed the mastermind behind last week's terror attacks was hiding. <laughs> Panicked residents heard explosions. Some were evacuated. Others told to stay indoors as heavily armed officers and soldiers moved through the streets. Authorities think mastermind Abdelhamid Aboud was inside the apartment with several other heavily armed suspects. The tense scene comes as police began searching for a second man who they say slipped away after the carnage. Authorities reportedly spotted him on surveillance video in a car with two other attackers who opened fire on customers at a bar. The brother of one of the suspected attackers is appealing for him to come forward. My advice to him is to turn himself into the police, he said, so justice can shed light on what happened. Saint Denis is just over a mile from the Stade de France, the soccer stadium targeted by three suicide bombers. Secretary of State John Kerry says attacks on so called soft targets like these pose yet another challenge for the fight against ISIS. For a terrorist, you only have to, if you're willing to die, you can choose almost anywhere to go do that. And everybody else who's in law enforcement trying to prevent it has to get every single thing right all the time, 24 7, 365. That's a much tougher task. French warplanes dropped more bombs, and Russia joined the airstrikes against ISIS in Syria. Jonathan Vigliotti, CBS News, Paris. Well, back here at home, we're tracking a developing story in Lexington. Police have had their hands full investigating several shootings in town that left at least three people hurt. Those crimes happened at three different scenes, all on the north side of town. They've been happening uh, hours apart. Uh, a lot of intrigue with this. The discovery of more evidence overnight has simply turned up some more questions than answers. Let's go to WKYT's Mark Barber, live at UK Hospital, where the victims were taken after these shootings. Mark? Good morning, Bill. Now, we're learning this morning that two of those three people who were shot in those three shootings yesterday are now in critical condition here at UK Hospital. Now, there are five different scenes connected to these three shootings, so investigators are very busy this morning trying to piece together evidence from those different scenes. All this violence started on the Sal Drive around 2.30 yesterday afternoon in the Hollow Creek neighborhood. Now, while investigators are still trying to figure out what happened there, they are telling us one person was shot and they are in critical condition. While investigators were searching for leads in that case, another person was shot, this time at a pawn shop on the corner of Russell Cave Road and New Circle Road. Police say that the victim who was shot there showed up at the hospital later. That person was critically hurt when someone drove up in a black car, got out and started shooting. Now, the third shooting here happened less than a mile away on Lima Drive, less than two hours later. 
That's where officers found a man outside a Dollar Plus store with two gunshot wounds to his back. We're told his car, a gray 2005 Nissan Altima, was stolen after he was shot. Then finally, around 11.30 last night, when investigators were back in that same neighborhood where the first shooting happened, they heard more gunshots. We're told that led them to a car on Linwall Drive that was riddled with bullet holes. They think that scene is connected to one of the three shootings that did happen yesterday. In fact, police are saying that they, that they think that some of these three shooting scenes are actually connected to each other. Now we're told that investigators are questioning one person about all this violence. We're told that they found that person at the Super 8 Motel on Elkhorn Road. Now we have been putting calls into investigators this morning asking if charges have been filed. At this time, our calls have not been returned. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you very much. And police are also investigating another unrelated shooting in Lexington. That happened during the overnight investigations as well. They think it happened in the Hollow Creek area around 1130. They tell us that a woman has shown up at UK Hospital with a minor gunshot wound around 1 o'clock this morning. They say they're still trying to figure out what led up to that shooting. Well, we are tracking a traffic alert that's happening in Lexington, a road partially shut down south of the city because of a crash. And hopefully this is going to be reopening soon, but Walnut Hill Road has been shut down since about 1030 last night. It's after a semi-truck wrecked. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is live from the scene now with a look at the cleanup efforts going on. Uh, Michelle, when do we expect the road may reopen? Yeah, according to police, this section of Walnut Hill Road between DeLong Road and Shelby Lane is not expected to reopen until 8 o'clock. Now, we were originally told 6 o'clock, but police just informed me that, that this will be closed until 8 o'clock this morning. Now, you can see the guardrail behind me. It's now damaged following an accident that now has this road closed. This delay due to a non-injury accident involving a semi-truck. What we know, according to police, is around 10 o'clock last night, the driver of the truck was trying to make a sharp turn. The truck then struck the guardrail, causing extensive damage to the trailer. Now, there was enough damage that crews are now working on transferring the goods inside that trailer to another trailer. The driver is okay. Walnut Hill Road is expected to open up, like I said, around 8 o'clock this morning. Now, I'll be sure to keep you updated on that time. Once again, the accident happening here on Walnut Hill Road on the 3000 block. It should reopen around 8 o'clock this morning. Live in Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. All right, thank you, Michelle. And new this morning, Lexington police are searching for an inmate who they say never came back from a work release program. 32-year-old John Milton Percival was supposed to come back to the Fayette County Jail last night at 7. He was originally in jail on drug possession charges. He was set to be released on November 26th. He is 6 feet tall, weighs about 150 pounds, and has red hair and blue eyes. Happening right now out in eastern Kentucky, crews are battling a forest fire in Harlan County. They say the weather is making their job a lot tougher. That fire is burning west of Harlan near the Bell County line. Crews say high wind is making the fire spread more quickly. About 400 acres of land have burned since the fire started Saturday night. Crews are still investigating, and while they have not figured out exactly what sparked the flames at this point, they are not ruling out arson as a possibility. An Eastern Kentucky woman is recovering after a terrifying encounter with a man she tried to help. Lisa Compton first met Wallace Davis a f Spence a few weeks ago when he asked for a place to stay. She says she let him sleep on her couch. But when he admitted he had served time for manslaughter decades earlier, she told him he had to leave. She said not long after she kicked him out, he broke into her home in the middle of the night, scary, pointing a gun in her face. Tried not to show him that I was afraid, and I told him, you want to kill me, go ahead and kill me. And she managed to call 911 without him noticing and actually wrestled the gun away from him, threw it out the window. Police say they are now looking for Spence. They say he may still be on the run in Ashland or in West Virginia. A close call for her. The FBI is asking for your help today in identifying a man wanted in a child sexual exploitation investigation. This is a picture of the man identified only as John Doe 34. The FBI has several videos of him with a young boy who they think is being exploited. Agents think the man is anywhere from 18 to 25 years old. Judging by the accent in the videos, they think he is from the South. 
5.41 on WKYT and new this morning, four people are facing charges in connection to a burglary at an outbuilding in Laurel County. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office arrested Lloyd Burkhart, Desiree Rogers, Jeannie Rogers, and Marty Wagers. Deputies say yesterday morning fishing poles, bait, tools, and some other items were stolen from that outbuilding. It's located on Jackson Ferriston Road. They say the stolen items were worth about $21,000. Deputies say they later found those items behind a nearby home and barn. A Richmond Pizza restaurant is delivering some help for the family of a fallen police officer. The Papa John's in Richmond donated all of its sales yesterday to the officer of, or to the family, I should say, of Officer Daniel Ellis. The general manager expects it to be their busiest day ever. The restaurant hopes to raise about $10,000 for the family. And new this morning, a water tower in Marion County will be getting a new makeover. Bourbon style. According to our partners at the Herald Leader, the water tower in Lebanon will be getting a new Maker's Mark mural. The tower will be painted with a giant bottle of Maker's with a huge pour painted down to the ground. <laughs> the artist will be Eric Hen, and the hope bill is that this new attraction will help to boost tourism. Right, and I think we were attempting to get a picture up of it there. We'll uh, try to show you a little later <laughs> an artist's rendering and so forth. Yes. Well, that was an interesting block of news, wasn't it? Uh, it was. <laughs> interesting things happening in yes. the world. Yes, 542 now on WKYT this morning, and time to check live drive traffic. Let's see what's going on bright and early on your Wednesday as we take a look out there right now. If we can uh, get going with our traffic, here we go. Live drive traffic now, and a look at uh, what is happening as far as the uh, traffic, normal conditions. No reports of any major problems, with the exception of that situation out on Walnut Hill. And uh, if we can uh, get you that, there is a road closure, and that is between DeLong Road and uh, Shelby Lane there in the southern part of Fayette County. Interesting that there would even be a, a, a semi out uh, on that uh, road. Uh, yeah. Not much out there in terms of uh, commercial locations, but uh, you never know why exactly uh, that may have happened. But this, now we're told 8 o'clock on reopening on that. Okay. All right, good to have you along on WKYT this morning, and a lot more is coming up here bright and early on your Wednesday. And we're looking at the rain back toward the west. Heading our direction, it's going to be a soggy one today. Good luck trying to stay dry. We'll get into that forecast and I'll show you hour by hour coming up.